what's this death stranding film in the works <gasps> babe i got great news <laughs> back here in my lovely spiderweb studio the game awards happened last week and now that all of the glitz and the glamour has worn off the hot air of all those world premiere trailers has dissipated we're all left with one thought wow game of the year went to elden ring of course and i suspect as this year winds down we're probably going to see Elden Ring win more Game of the Year awards. Probably most of them. Probably so many we become desensitized to it. The problem with that is, is that Game of the Year is a time-honored tradition in which we prove how good our taste is. If there's an obvious best answer, that challenges the whole purpose of this thing. Obviously, it won't be universal. There will be other people with other picks. You'll see God of War Ragnaroks out there. You'll see Immortality and Pentiment and Norco and Wordle. You will definitely see some Wordle. If you wander too far, you might see some Xenoblade Chronicles 3. But the thing is, we need all of those. Because, realistically, how many times can one person hear that Elden Ring is good? Wouldn't it be more fun to watch some lunatic try to explain to you that Dragon Quest Treasures is the actual goatee? It's not. It's not me. I'm not gonna... I also think Elden Ring is goatee. Which is the problem. I'm already bored with people who like Elden Ring. And frankly, I'm bored with myself for liking Elden Ring. You can't make a video about liking Elden Ring that people would be interested in watching. <laughs> I think I'm afraid that as we move out of 2022, as Elden Ring becomes more of a memory than a game we still play, that it's, it'll become one of those unchallenged thoughts. Oh yeah, Elden Ring was GOATY 2022. Elden Ring was great. There's no more thought necessary. I remember the bosses. I remember Ronnie. No more thought necessary. When, I hope what isn't forgotten is all of the ways in which it's a weirdly good game. Like, I hope it's genuinely the start of something. Elden Ring itself is a Souls game at its core that also said, let me try doing Breath of the Wild. I bet I could do it. I bet I, I, bet I could do it, Witcher 3 does easy, and then succeeds wildly at that. So now that we have this game that's not just critically praised like all the other Souls games are, it's now, financially, Buku, 17.5 million units, baby. I wonder if we'll see an Elden Ring imprint going forward. You know, like when Capcom stated that Monster Hunter World is the best-selling game in the entire Capcom history? And then just this year, EA was like, okay, hey, Koei Tecmo, can you make us one of those? And they said, yeah. And you're saying Souls Likes is already a thing. Haven't you played Hollow Knight? Yeah, Souls Likes are around. But what I'm wondering is if Elden Ring traits will become unavoidable going forward. Will Starfield have a tall ladder you climb forever? And then when you get to the top, you see a tough looking boss and you're like, oh, I better heal up. And then it knocks you off on your butt before you finish your last sip. Hope so. Will Insomniac's Wolverine have this cool, starry, huge, giant, dead giant room that you walk into? And there's no dialogue that's like, hey, Logan, are you seeing what I'm seeing? There's actually no dialogue. And then very suddenly, this horrific squatted over Digimon shows up and kills you in three swipes. That'd be nice. Will Pikmin 4 have this at first innocuous cliffside that's got these warnings from strangers that are like, be wary of fingers and be wary of pincer attack. And then you see some freaky hands and you think, oh, okay, I'm very prepared for this situation now before realizing that you are already in the pincer attack. At this point, how could it not? And really, I hope that's the stuff game designers take note of. I hope it's not just somebody writing down hard bosses. Goat horse. You know, I hope they're not just looking at this from the surface 
because I think it's the untrailerable moments that set Elden Ring apart, that make it the best game of the year. Epic boss fights and cinematic cutscenes, those work really well for trailers. But also, that's like 8% of the time we spend in a video game. And in Elden Ring's case, I feel like it's the best of it is that discovery, just wandering around that world full of what I would call hilarious danger. Like you're on an adventure, right? You're, you're riding around on a, a goat horse doing deeds for NPCs, but also this entire time you are aware that it's like your roommate is pranking you. Elden Ring presents a world with just this wonderful, playful sense of humor. And that doesn't really come across in the trailers or in the end of award show montages or in YouTube videos where someone is trying to explain it. It, it only comes across when you're playing the game, right? And that's the stuff that's impossible to preserve. It's the stuff that's hardest to remember. And by the way, I do realize it's crazy for me to call those moments untrailerable when I did that video about how impressed I was that early on marketing decided to market that low key scene where you meet Alexander. Five reasons why that 74 seconds of Elden Ring is better than any trailer from this year. So why did we get a full year of dipshit trailers after that? Why are we still making those? Here you go, you dipshits. You don't have to do that anymore. Just be like the goatee. Just be like Elden Ring. Show us what your Alexander scene is. Anyway, that is delayed input. This show will be going on a three week break. As usual, I'll put up a non-delayed input in the middle of those three weeks. However, as my holiday plans are still pending, I'm not sure which day that will fall upon. I do know, though, that delayed input will return January 13th. Until then, thanks for watching. It's now time, of course, to present This Week in Dorky Trailers. First up, we have Horizon Forbidden West Burning Shores. This trailer seems nice at first glance. Something notable about it is that there is no dialogue. It's almost like a modern Zelda trailer. That could be nice, right? Here's the big difference is that Zelda trailers normally have a shift. They usually pivot to this moment where you're thinking, oh, that looks really fun. This trailer is like, look what happened to your precious Capitol Records building. This giant robot is about to destroy the beloved iconic Hollywood sign. All right. So instead of presenting what looked to be fun video game environments, it's showing what they presume will be provocative images that I don't think really shock anyone. By the way, this thing, this robot, the giant robot, those were in Horizon 1, alive, and then they were asleep for all of Horizon 2. And so I feel like this reveal is incredibly soft. These old big robots are awake again. Get your wallets ready. But its statement is clear. It's clear to everyone who even didn't play Forbidden West. What makes this expansion different is that we're going to LA. Mission accomplished. With the Cyberpunk Phantom Liberty trailer, most of this could be scenes from the first game, and I don't know who could tell. The big difference here is obviously the appearance of Idris Elba. Watch this part. Peace comes at a price. Someone's always gotta pay. trailer is designed, it's built around the silhouette of Idris. It's built around the reveal. We, we booked another big Hollywood actor. Here's the best acting and dialogue we can provide for you. Peace comes at a price. Someone's always got to pay. What I think is hilarious about this, I guess, is like a cultural touchstone is, I mean, you could Google it. You, it was only three years ago. It was 2019. Keanu Reeves cyberpunk reactions. You'll see people flipping out. Yeah, me included. And here we are, survivors in the world of 2022. And I think we could all agree that that trick didn't work twice. 
did not have close to the same impact. It, we're through, we're over that. However, the trailer does include a diagonal elevator, which to me are always very cool. So it's not the dorkiest trailer of the week. Number one dorkiest trailer of the week, of course, goes to Immortals of Avia. You don't get it, do you? All you are is angry. All of Avium is crumbling apart. You don't win in ever war. It's just dialogue. I don't know how they're still making the same trailer. Just throw whatever dialogue we got in there. People won't care. Let me recite to you what you just heard. You don't get it, do you? All you are is angry. All of Avium is crumbling apart. You don't win in ever war. This editor trying to pluck the best lines and picks, you don't get it, do you? And then the trailer ends like this. What? What do you think you showed us? Trailers, the trailer ends like, boom. There it, mic drop. You're welcome. Well, what did you think you showed? Do you, you, do you think we think the wrist claw is cool? It doesn't look cool. Do you think we think little spinning cubes are cool? I don't want a sp little spinning cube. This is dollar spent to quality of trailer. Easily the dorkiest trailer of 2022. Congratulations to Immortals of Avium. All you are is angry.